Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's scripture affirmation. On yesterday, I talked about, um, we were talking about the armor of God because we're in a time when um, it is absolutely imperative. It is absolutely necessary. There is a call for the body of Christ to pray. It is a call for the body of Christ to rise up and begin to fight like we were purposed to fight the spiritual battle that we're called to. So this is the time that we must rise up, but we have to rise up in faith. We have to rise up ready. We have to rise up knowing how to use our armor and our weapons so that we are protected so that we are walking in the power that we've been delegated, given the dominion, the authority. And so I was talking yesterday about the whole armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, because the Bible reminds us that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we are instructed to put on the whole armor of God that we are able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. We are told to put on the whole armor of God that we're able to stand against the wiles or the craftiness or the trickiness of the devil. So we started off yesterday because in verse 14, it starts off listing the parts of this armor. And the first part in verse 14 says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So we talked about the belt of truth. Today, we want to talk about the next piece that says, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. We need to make sure that we're covered. If you're believing for signs, for wonders, for miracles, you have to know that you're in a spiritual battle, that we are fighting against an enemy that we cannot see. We need to wear the armor that we've been given, use the weapons that we've been provided, and we need to walk forward and stand against the opposition the, the enemy's tactics and his trickery, you know, as it relates to our family, to our, our lives, our walk, our relationship with God, those around us, the work that we've been given, the ministry that we've been given, the assignments that are before us, the, you know, as it relates to us believing for healing and deliverance and, and, you know, all of the things that we have been bringing before the Lord and the things that we are called as believers to do so that others are coming to Christ, that the kingdom of God is being built up, being, a, being, uh, increased in not just number, but in boldness and in faith and in power. And so, um, so I want to look at this breastplate of righteousness quickly. Um, when you think about uh, the breastplate as a part of uh, the um, armor for a Roman or Israel soldier, you know, preparing for battle, you're looking at, you know, a, a bronze or, you know, a chain of mail. You're looking at this big piece of armor that covers your vital organs. It covers like your heart, basically, is what I want to focus on today. But it covers so that, you know, so that you are protected in that area because we know that that is is a vital, you know, without our heart, if our heart is attacked, you know, it, it causes death. And so when we think about this, this breastplate of righteousness, this breast, this breastplate that was a part of armor for the soldier that protected the heart. And then when this breastplate was put on, um, it would fit in the loops and buckles of the belt that we talked about. So if your belt isn't on right, then the breastplate isn't on right. We need to understand that everything goes together, everything fits together, everything has its purpose, and each part is necessary, as necessary as the other part. So when we look at how Paul talks about the armor of God, and uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it's relating what we need to have on to military gear. So every part of it is representing Christ in some type of way, God's strength that He's given us. And so when we talked about the belt of truth, we know that the truth truth is God uh, or Jesus. And, and and Jesus is the word of God. So the word of God is truth. Jesus is truth. Now, when we think about this breastplate that needs to cover our heart, remember, you know, you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart and you shall be saved. But Jesus also tells us that out of the heart is wickedness. You know, when uh, all the envians and adulteries and, you know, uh, murders and all those things that comes from the heart. Our heart has to be protected. So when we think about how evil comes out and we know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So as we're speaking, are we speaking the word of God? Because if that's what's in our heart, 
then that's what we're speaking out of our mouth. So we need to protect our heart so that our heart has the word of God. Remember the Psalms tells us, um, uh, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. We have to be in right standing with God in order for us to be victorious in this battle. And we have no righteousness in and of ourselves because the Bible tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. But righteousness means right standing with God. How do we get in right standing with God? Through Jesus Christ. He's our mediator. He is our, our, uh, he bridged the gap, you know, between us and God. We were separated from God and through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and our faith in him, the gap uh, is closed and we are able to get to God through Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So he is our righteousness. He is who causes us to be in right standing with God. The word of God, the living word of God. So this tells me that in order for us to have on our breastplate of righteousness, we need to be in Christ Jesus. He is our righteousness in him. That is how we are in right standing with God. God sees us through Christ, you know, in Christ Jesus. And so this is our righteousness. This is what protects our heart because Jesus is the living word of God. In John chapter one, it tells us in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And then it tells us down in verse 14 of that same chapter that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So he is the living word of God. And so we need to have him in our heart. When we say we receive Christ in our heart, we have to believe in our heart that Jesus died for our sins, that he's the son of God, that he rose from the dead, that he's alive, that he's seated on the right hand of the father. But not only that, we have to hear and obey. He says, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 7, those that will see the kingdom of heaven are not just the ones that hear the sayings, but they're the ones that hear his sayings and do them. Those that do the will of God. So we are supposed to be like Christ, disciples, disciplined learners, following after him, having the mind of Christ. So when we think of this breastplate of righteousness, it means that we are abiding in Christ, that we are living in him and he is living in us, that his word dwells in us richly, that his word takes over in us. This is how we protect our heart. And Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5 in the Beatitudes, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So if we want to have that relationship with God and we want eternal life, hope past this life, if we want to be in right standing with him, our hearts have to be pure and our hearts are only cleansed and washed through the blood of Jesus, through the word of God. Jesus tells us in John 15 that we were washed with the word. And so we need to have this word in our heart. He is the word. We need to live in the word and the word needs to live in us. And so it takes us back because again, all of this armor is necessary and connected. All of it is necessary. And all of it, when you look in the scriptures, will connect you to it. Because when you think about having to be in Christ in order to have on this breastplate of righteousness, because you need the word in your heart, you need Christ in your heart in order for your heart to be purified, for you to be in right standing with God. And then when you're in Christ and he's in you, then you're abiding in him and his word is abiding in you. And then he tells us in John chapter eight, that then we'll know the truth and the truth will make us free, which brings us back to the belt, which holds on the breastplate. So it's all connected. So we need to find out examine ourselves and see if we be in the faith. And this is it. Look today. Are you abiding in Christ or are you just in Christ when you're in church on Sunday or when you're in midweek Bible study or when you're singing a praise song? Are you just jumping in and out? Is the word in you uh, sometimes, but not always? Are you looking at it only when someone's teaching you on Sunday morning or are you studying to show yourself a proof? Are you meditating on the word day and night? Are you hiding the word in your heart? Are you allowing the word to cleanse your heart? Are you allowing your heart to be protected by the word of God, by Jesus Christ, so that you can walk holy and upright. This is what we need to do. We need to be purged, purified, cleansed. We need to let the word come in and wash us. So we have to stay in the word so that we can, so that we can abide in Christ Jesus because he is the word. This is our breastplate. This is what protects our vital organs. This is what protects us from letting all of the evil in and, and it, and it begins to wash out the evil that was already there. The Bible tells us that our heart is exceeding wicked. Who can know it? God knows our hearts. And so we need to allow God to send his word to 
cleanse and purify our hearts so that we are able to see him more clearly. So when Jesus tells us that out of the heart there's there's murders and adultery and all these different things, we need to be cleansed of those things so that we can clearly see God. We need to be cleansed and then we need to protect it by getting more word, more word, more word, more word. And then we give no place to the enemy. Then we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 4 says, give no place to the devil. How do I do that? By filling up on the word, by staying in the word, by abiding in Christ. Then I let this word dwell in me richly. There's no room for the enemy to come in. There's no room for him to mess with my mind because my mind is meditating on the word so that I can get it deep down in my heart so that it's rooted, so that it's grounded instead of me having evil roots. I got the word of God in on the inside of me. So we need to have on this breastplate. We need to abide in Christ. So today the challenge is not just to have on the belt of truth, but for us to connect that breastplate of righteousness, abide in Christ and everything you're doing today, acknowledge that you are representing the Savior, that you're in him. People shouldn't even see us. They should see the Christ that we are in. They should see the Christ who's on the inside of us. They should see Jesus. When they see us, when they hear us, we should be speaking the word. When we're walking out our life walking out our daily activities, going to work, taking care of our household, whatever we're doing, people should, should, should see the Christ in us, see us in Christ. And so decrease so he can increase, so that your heart is covered, so that the enemy cannot come in, so the enemy cannot uh, 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 throw anything at you that is going to, to penetrate your heart, but that you have the truth on the inside of you. So the challenge is today is for us to abide in Christ, put Put that truth on and then have on that breastplate of righteousness. Make sure everything we say and do, or it do is with a pure heart that we are getting that word in our heart and that's what's coming out of our mouth and that's how our actions are. So if out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and out of the heart are the issues of life, it tells us to guard our heart because in it is the issues, uh, uh, the issues of life spring forth. So we need to understand that, that, that our heart determines what we say and what we do, what we say and what we do, what we say and what we do, it comes from the heart. So we need to protect it and we need to get the word in it. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to put on this breastplate of righteousness. Help us to abide in Christ and he in us. Let your word dwell in us richly. Let your word be hidden in our heart that we might not sin against you. Help us to walk righteous because your word is in us. Help us to walk upright before you and right standing with you and in agreement with you, God, that we can be all that you purpose, that we can do all that you called us to do and that we will bring glory to your name. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for continuing the good work in us. We thank you for the armor of God that you are covering us and keeping us, and that you give us wisdom and knowledge, that we're able to wear this armor and use the weapons, that we are victorious and more than conquerors to him that loved us. We thank you, we praise you, we love you, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't let anything ungodly within you today. Be careful how you hear. Be careful what you're watching, what you're listening to. Make sure that it's the word coming in, that it's taken up root in your heart. Put on that breastplate and guard your heart. And so I encourage you, if you're able, join us in the morning, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that we can go before the Lord in word and prayer. It's Monday through Friday. You can log on to Facebook and go on my page, Tony Brooke Brown, or you can simply call the number underneath this YouTube video. But join us if you're able. We go in faith before the Lord, casting our care, standing in the gap one for another, getting some word in us so we can walk in the word. I also encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't, so you can get updates when I upload. But if you have subscribed, Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching so we can get this word in us that we can connect as a body of believers and do the work of the Lord so that we will bring glory to his name that the kingdom of God is taken over territories and households and neighborhoods and communities in this nation and also share this message with someone who needs it. But most of all, Share the gospel with somebody today that doesn't know Christ. Share the love of God with someone today that they will glorify him. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. Be a vessel, be an instrument in God's hands that he can use you for his glory. And so I will see you next time. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Put on the full armor of God that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. God bless you.